Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Seema Shah Fairbank, and in this video, we'll discuss watershed characteristics. At the end of this video, you'll be able to understand watershed characteristics such as land use, soil types, roughness, and channel characteristics, which impact runoff. So let's talk about land use first. The effects of land use can really impact hydrology. As watersheds become more and more impervious, we will reduce the amount of water which can infiltrate. As you can see in the schematic, in the first case where we have complete natural cover, we have a significant amount of infiltration, almost 50%, with only 10% of the water running off. By infiltrating the water, we're also storing it into our groundwater. But as you increase the density of the environment and you start adding more residential, commercial, industrial areas, you'll see an increase in the amount of runoff. For example, when you talk about low density, where 10 to 20% of the surface is impervious, you have 20% runoff and 42% infiltration. But as you move to a medium density, residential, you only have 35% impervious and 30% and runoff. And high density areas like we live in Southern California, we're looking at very, very high runoff, 55%. When large storms do occur, there can be potential for flooding. And we need to be cognizant of how we design our systems and how the watershed will work. There's a second video in this sequence regarding curve numbers. It'll show you how we can quantify the impacts of land use. Roughness is really important. Roughness impacts how water will move. Roughness can be associated with overland sheet flow versus channel flow. In an overland situation, you have sheet flow occurring. In a channelized, water is channelized inside of it. As you can see, the water depth is quite high in the channel versus sheet flow. Now, in these systems, roughness is much higher in sheet flow because the water is moving in all that grass. There's very little water open to the free surface where it's uninhibited. While the channel, the grass is not impacting the channel as much. When it comes to the flow, you can see the flow depth is very low in sheet flow compared to channelized flow. And finally, the velocity or flow potential is quite low in sheet flow, but it's much higher in channelized flow. Soil characteristics can impact hydrology. We really need to know what the underlying soil characteristics are. The sandier the soil, the more water can infiltrate. As you increase the amounts of silts and clays in the soil, you'll notice that the water cannot, inf cannot infiltrate to the same level. Soils that are high in clay are extremely susceptible to lack of infiltration. So how do you use this texture triangle? So imagine we had 30% sand, 30% clay, and 40% silt. So we go 30% clay, sand I mean, 30% clay, and 40% silt, and we're left with a soil type called clay loam. Please note, on the curve number video, we will discuss how hydrologic soil groups are related to the soil characteristics described through the texture triangle. But it's really important if you have never seen a soil texture triangle, such as this, to be familiar with it and to understand how to read it. Next, drainage density. Drainage density is the ratio of total channel length to watershed area. If you can imagine the Burbank Canyon watershed with all our channels, the total channel length is the sum of all the blue streams in the schematic, while the area is the boundary of the watershed. If you take the ratio of, of the length to the area, you will be left with the drainage density. Drainage density indicates the numbers of stream or you can think of it as the density of streams in the watershed. The higher the drainage density, density, the quicker the watershed will respond. For example, if you could think of roads and streets in an urban environment as rivers, water will move more efficiently out of the system because of those roads that act like rivers. Next, we're gonna talk about stream order, Horton stream order to be particular. It measures stream branching. The way it works is, a first order stream is a single stream. A second order stream occurs when you have two first order streams combined, as shown. A second order stream still occurs if a second order stream meets a first order stream. 
A third order stream only occurs if a second order stream meets another second order stream. So let's look at the schematic again of Burbank Canyon. Let's first identify all the first order streams. You can see they're scattered throughout the system. Anytime a first order stream meets another first order stream, we will have a second order stream. So I've identified all the second orders. Next, if two second order stream meets, then we'll have a third order stream. But if a third order stream intersects a first order stream, you still have a third order stream. And that's why this, this schematic is a third order system. I hope that this video helped you understand some of the watershed characteristics that are gonna be useful as we discuss runoff curve number and travel time in the next few videos. See you all soon.